I have a few minutes before I meet some of my friends to go into the seminar that I'm in for Landmark, my excellent seminar. Last time I left a video, I was talking about that. But um, what's even happening for me? A lot. I just had my surgery date rescheduled from December 12th and um, I got now it's happening on January 2nd and there was a lot of back and forth to make that happen but it's now it has oh shoot no I got it it's now happening so that's good I thought I forgot something I need I'm stopping at the flower garden to get a matcha latte Just gotten so sloppy with my relationship to time and I blame it on living where I do how people are always late and shit like that but that's just an just an excuse to not be responsible for my own lack of integrity around not being on time well I probably will be I have 20 minutes to get to Kmart and it's actually only like two or three stops from where I'm at but I guess I just don't like to uh, like cut things close because you just never know what happens you know it's like being in a rush and then other people and other cars you know you can't really predict what's going to happen so anyway now I'm off to meet my friends at the Kmart parking lot so we can carpool together but basically I was supposed to have surgery no December 12th I got my matcha latte with rice milk and we had to cancel it because of the platelets. My platelets, oh, the really good news is my platelets are 58,000 right now. It's awesome. So they're like creeping up little by little. Seems like 10,000 a week is what they're creeping up. So they're still far from the normal of 150. Um, but hopefully this will keep trending up. And I'm taking the papaya leaf extract and the Promacta. But when I did the Promacta for the first while, my platelets were actually going down, down, down. And then I started doing the papaya leaf extract and now they're going up. So I really, even though I stayed doing the Promacta and I really do attribute the, the growth, the rise in the platelets to the um, papaya leaf extract. So it's super good news. And the kind of concerning news is that, that my estradiol, which is one of the measurements for estrogen in the body, seems to have gone through the roof. Um, when I had it last checked, I can't remember the numbers, but it was probably a month ago, and it was uh, around 100 something, and then I just had it checked recently, like last week, and the number is something like um, 600 something, and I looked that up, and that's, I mean, that's either a typo or that's an insane number for estradiol. Um, the range was something around 100. And 150 I can't remember exactly so I did write to the the assistant the nurse and the assistant to the medical oncologist at Stanford and said um, should I be what should I do that sounds troubling and it's kind of like I giving people information that they don't understand can be um, a dangerous thing because they can have a tendency to blow it out of proportion or misinterpret it and I'm absolutely willing to uh, accept that perhaps I've done that I don't really know but I but I would like to find out she wanted me to get my ovaries out like yesterday or take the Lupron injection and I just don't know which I should do so I need to make that decision but the my new surgery date is January 2nd and oddly one of the choices was December no was November 27th the day before Thanksgiving and last year I had surgery the day before Thanksgiving and then I we ended up, I ended up back in the hospital on Thanksgiving because I had the hematoma. So it was a little bit odd. It felt very uh, coincidental to have the same exact possible date, but that did, date didn't work for a few reasons. So I went with January 2nd. So, uh, and then I have to go for a post-op, something like December 12th. Um, I need to meet with the dermatology team at Stanford so they can just check my skin uh, and see what's happening with it. Oh, I also had I had a chest CT angio yesterday because I the day before I had this really sharp stabbing pain on my right side, like the kind where if I took a deep breath 
right when I got to the deepest part of the breath, it was really painful um, right there behind my chest wall. And that was kind of the only symptom I had. And then it turned into this kind of dull throbbing sort of, not throbbing, but like this dull persistent sensation. And so I sat there and like watched it for a while because the last thing I wanted to do was go to the emergency room. Uh, and it went away after 15 minutes. Um, and so then I went yesterday to talk to the medical oncologist about having post-traumatic stress disorder, which I, part of me is really reluctant to accept, but another part of me is like, this is real. This is real stuff. I do have post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, adding the platelet stuff on top of the cancer is just like, I don't, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. Each of those are a lot on their own. And together, it's just, it's no wonder I'm, you know, suffering in the ways that I am emotionally and mentally lately. So I was talking with him about that and what the options are. Oh man, the sun is really bright. I mentioned the thing about my chest and they don't mess around. Like once you have cancer and once you're dealing with your heart, I mean, they don't take this stuff lightly. And it wasn't on my heart side, it was on the other side, but, but still, you know, it's still... Um, concerning so he basically sent me to have an ultrasound on my leg and of my right leg and then a chest CT angio which I already had one like five months ago but I guess you know five months ago is nothing five months ago does this moment no good <laughs> does yesterday no good so I had to redo it so it's really good news that I don't have a pulmonary embolism or a blood clot in my leg. Um, and I still am left wondering what the pain is because I've also had a pulling on my, on the port. It's kind of just been this pulling feeling. And, okay, my, the nurse is calling now. Well, that was handy that the nurse called and she told me that the estradiol number is very, um, it's inaccurate because I've been going off and on with the tamoxifen and it, it's just gonna change the number and we're gonna revisit whether I'm gonna have the ophorectomy, the ovary removal, or do the Lupron injection in January. I just scheduled to go on January 21st, I think, and I'm already going on January 8th for the post-op visit with the plastic surgeon assistant. Um, so I feel good about that. She said, do not worry, you're, it, it's not an accurate number given you know, my habits. So, <sighs> This stuff is scary, you know? It's really, it's a lot. Anybody who's going through it knows what I'm talking about. It's really a lot to deal with. And I desperately need a, I need to be meditating again or doing yoga or doing something regularly to ease my mind and to bring peace and to remind me of my breath because I forget about it, you know? And then I get kind of like tossed about and it doesn't help. I really don't have anything that grounds me right now, honestly. That's sad, huh? So that's what's happening with me and the updates and I'm still plugging along. Hopefully whatever's happening in my right side chest will resolve. I mean, they're gonna be getting in there in January when they go to place the expander. So I'm like, if you see anything that looks bizarre, you know, <laughs> let me know what's happening under my chest wall. So, all right, that's it.